I'm sorry about the title, but I just had a thought while I was staring at this blank screen. <laughs> I just thought it would be fucking brilliant if I clickbaited everyone for Pokemon Academy Life. I don't even know why I had that thought. It just popped into my head and I was like, yes, I fucking have to. But anyway. <laughs> God damn it. What? I'm so sorry. <laughs> But anyway, how is it going guys? My name is Wonzy Bennett and welcome back to Pokemon Academy Life. Why the fuck you lying? No! Oh my god! <laughs> welcome back to Katawa <laughs> I've even done it to myself. Welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. And... <laughs> god damn it. Honestly, I wasn't going to be recording many more of these. Probably not anymore. And this probably still will be my last route. But... I had a couple of people actually really asking me to do it again, to at least finish Hanako's route, play some more of this, because there was a lot of demand for it, to be honest. People really liked it, so I'm really happy with that. It made me very happy to, to be honest, <laughs> to, to, you know, to see that people wanted this. But, I mean, it's a great game. I'm just, you know, it, it's only so long you can, sta you can sit at a computer desk reading after a hard day's work. But, I mean, I, I love the game, and the story's beautiful, the characters are beautiful, the writing is beautiful so why the hell not but my hair looks a mess and we're ready so let's get back into talking simulator 2017 <laughs> i'm such an idiot my alarm blares into my ears only to be swiftly silenced by my fist time to take a little bit of a lean forward so that my mic can pick up my voice in a more deep rumble Ooh, baby <laughs> god damn it i need to stop that my body switches into auto mode carrying my subconscious self out of bed and into my uniform as always my Bot oh god, what have I done? No! <laughs> As always, my bottles of pills sit on my desk, patiently waiting for me to take them and pick out my daily dosage of medicine. 17 pills a day. Before I know it, I'm opening the door to class 3-3. Glad to see that I'm not the only one who seems to be a little hungover from the festival week. Every face in the classroom looks gaunt. With the festival now over, it's as if everyone's life dreams have been achieved. With nothing left to live for, the students have relied on instincts alone to guide them to class. Or maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Now, nah, mate, Kenji was right. It's a big conspiracy theory. We're all screwed. <laughs> I slowly make my way to my seat. And it's only then that I realize why the room is so peaceful. The seats beside mine are blissfully empty. The world's loudest interpreter for the death has yet to arrive. <laughs> oh, God. That got me. That got me a little bit. It made me spit on myself. Just as I'm about to sit down, the door flies open, revealing a resplendent Misha. <laughs> Drills bobbing from the... What the... <laughs> Drills bobbing from the dramatic entrance and arms stretched out toward the sky. Yahoo! It's all over! It would appear that not everyone is affected by the post-festival depression. The rest of the class glares at her, obviously thinking the same thing I am. Misha, still frozen in the doorway with her arms still in the air, nervously looks around. It's obvious that she senses the foul mood, but can't work out exactly what to do. Suddenly, she jerks forward. Hey! As she stumbles into the classroom, she reveals Shizne, still arms, uh, arms still extended from where she shoved Misha. Dot dot dot. Thanks for the entertainment, but shouldn't you two take your seats? Dot dot dot. Still slightly embarrassed, Misha takes a few seconds to realize she has to translate. Oh, uh, yeah, Shi Chan, she says she's not happy with you ditching us last week. We were really busy. Is that so? What about the stuff I already did for you two? Dot dot dot. Oh, that face! She's like, hmm. <laughs> God, I love Shizne. She's actually pretty funny with those facial expressions. I can't imagine how hard it must be to actually, you know, get across shit like that. To actually communicate with someone without being able to use your words. It must be so difficult. I really want to play Shizne! <laughs> I need to finish Hanako first. I really, really do. Anyway. She says that only counts for council members. Since you declined, she, uh, she says that only counts for council members. Since you declined, she doesn't owe you anything. Misha leans closer and whispers conspiratorially into my ear. Actually, I think she's just a little sore that you didn't spend the day with her. She's really thankful for your work last week, though. Sensing that she's being talked about, Shizune lightly wraps her fingers on the desk until Misha turns around to face her. <laughs> I can't understand any of the fast-paced signing that's going on, but from Shizne's slightly embarrassed expression and Misha's poorly contained laughter, I can guess. 
While this exchange is happening, the door opens once again, but at this time a much more reasonable pace. Hanako quietly enters the room and pulls the door closed behind her. Peering out from under her hair, she quickly scans the classroom. Her eyes meet, and she suddenly stiffens. She closes her eyes, takes a deep breath, and then walks over to my desk. G good morning, Hizal. Morning, Hanako. You're a little late, aren't you? I was talking to Lily uh, about today. Ah, so you've got her list then. We can leave straight out after class in that case. Sh sure. I'm looking forward to it. Hanako briefly flashes her embarrassed smile at me and then hurries off to her seat. Damn it, Hanako, stop it! Why are you being so... Meh, she's so annoying. During classes, it becomes apparent that it's not only the students that are a little despondent after the festival. Muto simply gives us a list of exercises from the textbook and then sits behind his desk. I totally forget about the brief lunch period for a moment. Such is the banality of the day. It's mind-numbing and everyone seems surprised when the bell signals the end of the lessons. As I'm picking up my bags, Shizne and Misha flank and entrap me. Say, Yi-Chan, it's not too late to join up. There are lots of post-festival paperwork for us to complete. Uh, sorry, Misha, I've got plans. As if sensing the cue, Hanako appears behind me, holding a small bag and trying to avoid eye contact with the outside world. Misha's eyes open wide, then she bursts into laughter. Bwahaha! <laughs> you move fast, don't you, Yi-Chan? We won't disturb your date any further. <laughs> oh my God. It's not a date. We're going shopping for a blind girl. It, I'm not going to finish that. I was going to say it's more like community service. But no, stop it. No, that was bad, Alex. That was a joke and it was a poor joke in very poor taste. And I'm just going to slap myself and give myself a tap on the wrist and apologize and move on. Behind the roaring Misha, I see Shizune taking far too little interest in the scene. I might be taking this the wrong way, but I think she's deliberately ignoring me. I feel a gentle tug on my t-shirt. Why, why t-shirt? There's no t-shirt there. <laughs> and turn to see Hanako's eyes firmly fixed on the floor. <laughs> Let's... Gotcha, sh <laughs> Gotcha. Shizune, Misha, I'll see you later. And I'm still not interested in the council. Spoiler, spoil sport. I really can't read today. I've been working with solvents and glue all day. Legitimately, I've been working with solvents and glue, and I really feel a bit dizzy and lightheaded still. I, I've got to work with it tomorrow as well, which is not going to be fun, but hey-ho. Misha and Shizne retreat into the hallway, happily signing to each other. Got all your stuff? Let's head off. No words. Floods of students pour out of the school gates and onto the road into town. It's a little weird. It's almost a scene from any other high school, but the illusion fades because of the occasional wheelchair or missing limb. <laughs> One thing I do is notice that nobody is alone. And as Hanako and I pass through the gates, I notice that she closes the distance between us. Not enough to be considered close, but she certainly isn't at her usual, just a little far position. I guess we're not familiar enough for her to get as close as she does with Lily. However, even though she has moved a little closer to me physically, mentally she seems to have traveled a mile. Ah! <laughs> That's actually really cute. Her hands clutched around the leather straps of her bag to the point of whitening her knuckles, her head down and her mouth first closed. She almost looks like she's being walked to the principal's office for the first time. I try to stifle a giggle at the thought, but it's futile. What? Uh, what's the matter? <laughs> I guess there's no point hiding it. Sorry. For a second there, it looked like you were getting in trouble. What? What? What, what do you mean? I think you need to relax a little. We're not going too far and it's only students around, right? R right bothers me a little to see Hanako so worked up. And you do this every week, don't you? Y yes w with Lily. Of course, with Lily. I wonder, has she ever left the school without her? It doesn't seem like much at first glance, but Hanako's dependence on Lily is absurdly heavy. Ah, stop it! I relate to you! Because I have a friend at uni that I kind of just tag along with and I don't really want to do things with other people because other people annoy me when I have this one person who I trust with pretty much my life and I keep going to this person instead of... I don't know, I try to push myself out there but every time I do it ends badly and I'm just like, ah, oh, damn it. Hannah Go, stop being so relatable. If she can't even handle leaving the school without her, how would she have managed if the... Uh, to, ah, how would she have managed to survive if the two had never met? Would she have found someone else to latch onto? And what drew her to Lily? Was it her lack of eyesight, or was Lily just kind enough to lend a hand? I wonder if anyone would have fit the bill. No! 
you don't just fall for anyone, Hizau. D stop this. That you, you're very judgmental, Hizau. I don't like you. <laughs> I really don't like him. Well, I'm here. Besides, we're not going far. It'll be over before you know it. Ah, that smile is actually so cute. Hanako's knuckles slowly regain their color as she tries to hide a small smile, but the effort of that seems to prevent further conversation. We travel side by side down the winding road. Ah, down the winding road towards the town. The crowd of students thins as we continue along the sidewalk. The faster students rush ahead, and the less mobile ones fall behind, rarefying the crowd into nothingness. By the time we reach the convenience store, we are practically alone. Using me as a shield between herself and the attendant, Hanako moves through the narrow aisles, adding an assortment of items to her basket. Bread, tea, milk, thyme? What kind of convenience store sells herbs? <laughs> me! The best kind! You get me! <laughs> this sells that sticky, sticky herb! Yes, mate! <laughs> Then again, nothing about this. I can't. Then again, nothing about this town seems normal, which may not be such a bad thing in retrospect. Everything is so different and uncomfortable. Dwelling on such matters isn't really an option. When I think about it, it reminds me of Hanako. No matter how much you try, you you can't escape her scars. They still interrupt my train of thought when I see them. And as much as I don't want to admit it to myself, I think I'm forcing myself to ignore them. Not that I'm scar-free myself. The jagged line down my stern and will never completely fade away. I just have the luxury of being able to hide it easily. But in a way, both of our scars remind me that we're all in this place for a reason. Dot dot dot. Hanako throws one last item into a basket, then sheepishly holds it out to me, along with a few banknotes. C could you please? Ah, she doesn't want to speak to the cash register person. <laughs> that is so adorable. <laughs> Stop. It takes me a second to understand what she's trying to say. Oh, you want me to pay for this? She nods, but doesn't look up. I guess this task falls to Lily on the usual occasions. Sure, let me just grab a couple of things. Hastily, I grab a few essential items for myself and head for the counter with Hanako in close tow. The attendant gives me an indifferent nod as he scans in the items. I suppose just ignoring us is one way to deal with the anomalies of Yamaku. They must get a lot of students here, being the closest store to the school. <clears throat> Sorry, bit of a dry throat. I don't have my emergency Pepsi Cherry Max with me today. Pepsi Max Cherry, Pepsi Cherry Max, what am I talking about? The staff must all have their own way of dealing with us. Or maybe they don't. Maybe it's only me who thinks twice about my unique schoolmates. Our transaction complete, Hanako and I head back out onto the street. The road is pretty much abandoned now. The students that were heading out have already left, and nobody has started returning just yet. And with only the school ahead on the road, there doesn't seem to be anyone else around. The emptiness certainly reflects on Hanako, her arms by her sides each carrying a bag, her head no longer bowed, and back to the upright position. It's almost as if she were enjoying this walk. So why all these weird things? Mixed spice? Why would you need that in school? I sometimes like to m make food. Well, yeah, so do I, but... Spices? That's a little more advanced, don't you think? No! I do cooking with spices! <laughs> and I'm pretty good at it, to be honest! I make a mean stir-fry. <laughs> no, 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 not really. Well, I think it's cool. You'll have to teach me one day. Sh sure. She doesn't seem all that sure, but pushing the point doesn't seem all that wise. At the very least, she seems a great deal happier than she did on the walk down here. That alone makes me a little happier. I want to do a bulk session of this. I need to check how long I've been recording for. Uh, 14 minutes. Okay. Okay. That, I'm, I hate having to do that, but I lost track of time. I want to do a bulk session, so I need to keep track of the time. Outside the girls' dorm, Hanako and I sort out the grocery bags with our retrospect respective purchases. In comparison, my things look positively plain. I tell you, you're putting me to shame here. N no, I'm not. I just... I'm only joking. I have a stack of homework that I skipped last week, so I'm... So I must leave now. <laughs> I have a stack of homework that I skipped last week, so I must leave now. Will you be alright getting that to your room? <laughs> you are not a posh bastard. I'm gonna get going. I mean, that's all you had to say. So I'm gonna head out. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna get going. I will leave now! <laughs> 
Will you be alright getting that to your room? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay then. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Ah, stop it. We part ways and I return to my room. Piles of papers sit upon my desk, begging to be completed. With the entire ruckus of the last week, I've barely had any time to catch up. I tried to keep up with my studies while I was in the hospital, but some of this stuff I've never seen before, even in my school. No, Eric! Please, Eric! Please don't- No, Eric! I'm recording! I need to get into the habit of closing off Discord, you know. I need to get into the- uh, Nope. I need to get into the habit of closing off Discord before I do anything, because this is happening in a lot of things recently, and I'm like, I need to stop this. Nope, no, I'm not clicking Camtasia. There we go. Totally unprepared, I pop the top of a can of drink and get to work. Is it a can of Monster? Or is it a can of Pepsi Max Cherry? If it is, you are my friend. If not, I don't like you. <laughs> For God's sake, what is wrong with me? <sighs> the days are really starting to heat up. This morning I awoke covered in sweat. By the time the student body starts leaving their dorms for breakfast and morning duties, the sun has taken full effect. Hardly that puts me in high spirits. It's not even eight yet, but I feel this day is going to be one of those pleasant, tranquil, warm ones. If I weren't at a school that considered every absence from class a sign of a life-threatening situation, I'd consider skipping the whole day and just relaxing in the school gardens. Yes, today will be a genuinely lazy day. For a second I stop in mid-stretch and consider the nurse's warning about exercise. Maybe I should have kept up those morning jogs. No, Hazal! You know what happens! You end up with Emmy, and Emmy wasn't the one, remember? Emmy wasn't the one. She was close, but not quite the one. We'll see. <laughs> Running with someone like Emmy might have been- No, it, it would have been, yes. But if I worked at my own pace? Yeah, who am I kidding? I couldn't stick to something like that without some kind of motivation. It's not like I sit around all day. The walk to and from the convenience store counts as exercise, right? Especially the walk back up the hill. I feel like that's true, and the only reason any kind of problems arose before was because he wasn't doing anything, he was just going to school, coming back, and not doing anything else. He used to play soccer, but he didn't have any meds for his heart back then, but he doesn't necessarily need to go running. The only reason the nurse asked him to start jogging with Emmy was because he felt like Emmy needed it more, because he's good friends with Emmy. I feel like he was trying to set Emmy up from the start, and that's why it felt a little bit forced. That's why I'm kind of preferring this... this this route so far because it's like it's it's a bit more natural he's making the decisions he's running into her naturally instead of like oh the nurse told me to come here so i'm gonna come here and run with you oh dear you know what i mean it, it, i don't know i like emmy's route i really do i think she's a cracking person she's got a cool character but the way the route was handled for me though it could have gone a bit better but ah, well it's still one of the best visual novel routes i've ever played ah oh, dearie me yeah, it's no big deal. Compared to months lying in a hospital bed, I'm getting plenty exercise. Are you, though? <laughs> it seems that I'm not alone in my appreciation of the day. Nearly every member of the class is glancing through the window and into the tantalizing sky. Even the steadfast Shizne seems to lack her usual vigor for schoolwork. Misha, as brazen as ever, has even unbuttoned the top buttons of her skirt and is even facing, fanning herself with a notebook. I must have been staring, as now she's sticking her tongue out at me. However, she shows no sign of halting her efforts, nor is she trying to hide the fact. <laughs> Stop staring at Misha! I know she's hot, for you, because anime girls, but still. The lunch bell seems to catch everyone by surprise, and the class empties at a much slower pace than usual. The heat seems to be draining the need for, to rush from everyone. Well, almost everyone. <laughs> is how? Hey there, Hanako. What can I do for you today? I need to really start giving him a bit more character in those lines, because some of these lines of him are starting to sound so bland. He had more character in the Emmy route. Hey there, Hanako, what can I do for you today? Hanako already has a lunch bag in hand. I don't have to be a detective to work out where this is going. Um, would you like to have lunch with us again? I, I brought enough for everyone. Awesome. You don't have to be so stiff about it though. Come on! <laughs> stop, stop giving me crap to work with! Ah. <laughs> uh, Right. Now take it we're going to the tea room. B please. Well, you said she'll meet us in there, so we should... 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 Go ahead together. Oh, I can see the little blush. I can see your little blush there. Sounds like a plan. This heat has made me pretty hungry. Hanako breathes a sigh of relief, and I gather my things together. But before he gathers his things together, I need to check again. Yep, that's where we're going to end this episode, so thank you very much for watching, guys. I've really enjoyed getting back into this. I really, I do enjoy these visual novels. They, 
really get me. I remember when I was doing Emmy's run for the first time, and it was like... I was so into Katawa Shoujo at that point, and I'm still not as into it as I used to be, but I still really enjoy playing it. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a like and all that good stuff. It would really be appreciated. And I hope you have a great day and a great life, and I will see you later. Take care of yourselves, guys. Ugh, Katawa Shoujo. Hmm.